I'll tell you what we're doing today. Someone here thought it would be a fun idea for me to make the exact same recipe as a professionally trained chef, and then forensically analyze the cooking differences and outcomes solely for the benefit and entertainment of you, the viewer. Enjoy. Kush, what have you got in front of you? I've got one card. I have one card, plus a stack of other cards, which hopefully will help me. Okay, what have you got on your card? I have. Fish cake with wilted kale and prawn shell sauce. I have the exact same thing. Good. That's what we're making, ouch. I have some very vague recipe steps that are completely out of order and need reshuffling. Do you need any help with that? Could I just post these through? Yeah, of course. And you just reorder them for me? Yeah. No, I'm giving it away. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning. Fired. There's a lot of food to cook and not much to go on. How long do you think this is going to take? What, we sh what should we be aiming for? What, okay, one portion. One portion to plate. An hour to do it properly. Okay, okay. Should we go for it? Uh, let's go for okay. it. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Huh? Right. Don't leave me hanging. It's not a challenge. All the best. Oh, Michael. What? Strong daddy grip. Yeah. yeah. Daddy grip. Okay, right. let's go in three, two, one. Right. So base of fish cake. Potatoes. <laughs> Get them cooking first, because you want a really dry potato to make your fish cake. I'm gonna microwave these, so they're soft. Don't need a crispy skin, just want a dry potato. What I'm going to do is find the thing that takes the longest, and I'm going to start with that. Prawn shell sauce. So I need prawn shells, and I need sauce. Oven's preheated, just want the heads. The shells don't have much flavour, it's all in the head. I want to get all the heads off, and I'll roast them off with some oil just to get a lovely flavour, get the shells really dark and caramelised and that'll go into the stock base that'll be made with carrot, onion, garlic, tomato base, wine and brandy. And I've put a timer on so it reminds me that the prawn shells are in there, we don't want to burn them. Right, next, let's get the base going, let's sweat the vegetables out, I want to build up a lot of flavour in there. My favourite pan, it's huge, covers the whole hob, get that on high heat, loads of surface area to get that mirepoix. Sofrito is neither, I know, don't at me. Get that nice and cooked and caramelised. Generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna go with all the veg in on a high, high heat. Once it starts frying, we'll turn the temperature down and slowly cook the veg through as the potatoes cook, then we'll prep some fish. Oh, this is so hard to know. There's so many things going on at once. Get, get a move on, do something. I can do some thinking chopping. Boil some potatoes. I've got sauce on, potatoes in. I need to peel the prawns, cook the cod beforehand very lightly, then use that fish stock into the sauce. So I'll get a pan on for that. Are you confident, Kush? In general? Yeah, well, I know I know you are. I, I think I'm a quite a confident driver. Uh, I can't fly a plane, so I wouldn't be confident at that. But you want to be more specific, Chef? Like with this specific dish that you're creating? Well, I, all I have to do is make three lines of text. A fish cake. Wilt some kale and a prawn shell sauce. So, but without any steps, I'm just making it up as I go along and trying to get as much cooking at the same time. I currently have two pans on, something in the microwave and something in the oven. What are you doing, Mike? Chopping. Chopping. This might be foolhardy, but I'm spending five minutes making an element to a dish that's not on the menu. But I think it'll be quite nice, a counterpoint to the rest of the dish, a carrot puree. Little bit of oil in a pan, because basically I'm gonna fry off my carrot and my onion we're 60, 70% of the way there to the dish being finished. I'm gonna peel the prawns now, throw these shells into the base, cook out with tomato paste, uh, white wine, uh, stock if I can find some, brandy. That beeping's the microwave, hopefully the potatoes are cooked. Mash them together with the prawns and the cod. Not much left, really. Prawns are slippery. Yeah, are you doing prawns as well? Yeah. Yeah, so am I. Are we both doing the same thing at the same time? I'm peeling my prawns as we speak. I must be a chef. You know a chef just means chief. Just chief? Chief, yeah, the boss. So technically you could be a chef. So prawn shell's gonna go in. Good amount of tomato paste. So I've added the brandy into the pan with the prawn, shells and veg. Put the white wine into the tray with the heads. Just gonna scrape up any lovely caramelized bits, the fond as they say, to get a lovely prawn stock. And all of this is gonna go in with some water. This is really hard. Probably didn't use enough oil there. Now let's get some tomato paste in there. And the reason I added a little bit more oil is because I want the oil to take on all the flavour 
to carry all of that prawny tomato flavor because I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have to strain this later. In the meantime, let's chop some prawns up. So prawns and cod are gonna make up the fishy element of my fish cakes. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, don't look because you know you might pick up some tips. So the potatoes need another five minutes. They're nearly soft. Because they're really steamy, they're trying to dry up on the outside. In that time, I'm gonna prep the fish get it ready into a bowl, ready to add some uh, parsley, some chives, um, and make my pane station ready to make the fish cakes. So our prawn sauce, it's got a lovely color to it, lovely color. I'm gonna put the fish and prawns into this saucepan, strain the sauce over it. To take that, will, pepper cannon. that will poach the fish and get rid of all the stuff that we don't need in the sauce. So I'm gonna heat up some milk to poaching, so tinsy tiny bubbles, and then I'm gonna poach my cod my prawns in it. The prawns are a lot smaller, so I think they're going to take less. I'm going to put the cod in first. I mean, that smells lovely. It's sticky, so I'm just going to add some water. What else can I do? Pane, pane. I can do a pane station. I can do a pane station. From panic stations to pane stations. Welcome to Cooking with Mike. Salt and pepper. I've put the pepper in the communal area. Communal area? Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much, chef. Do you like being called chef? I do. Does it make you go a bit, you know, fizzy inside? What, like a kombucha? You know, you get that little fizzy feeling in your stomach when you get praised by an elder or a superior. Okay, He's gone silent. He must be having that fizzy feeling. Right. <laughs> Egg, breadcrumbs, season the cod into the milk. Chuck some garlic in the stock for good measure. It's just crushed. It's all going to get blended up. Hopefully the heat will take the edge off it and you'll actually be able to taste it because you haven't fried the living daylights out of it. This is how I talk to myself in the kitchen. As if I despise myself. Can you make me a pane station as well, please, chef? No. It's a competition, apparently. It's a competition, apparently. Right, potato. Lovely and soft. Let's squeeze that straight in to the bowl. So I'm gonna get my lovely, delicately poached cod and prawns into my very dry potato. Okay, prawns can go in. Should have taken the skin off these, but I just can't be bothered. This is not the attitude I know. Look at that. He's learning. He's learning. How far are you along? To make a simple version of the dish, 10 minutes to make the dish that I want to make 20 minutes. Oh, okay. For me, to make something borderline edible, 20 minutes. Mix herbs, potato, fish in season. Or do I just mash it all up? Let's find out. Herbs in. Finely chopped pasty, it's gonna go into our fish cakes. Good healthy amount. And the rest is gonna go into our bowl of chopped herbs for garnish later. Prawn sauce, nearly done. Fish cake mix just needs seasoning, forming into the cake, chilling, and then panneying. So that's quite a lot to do, in fact. Let's go with some salt, pepper. This looks really good. Still warm, so it needs to chill down. I'm gonna whack that in the freezer for about five minutes while I make my panne station. To make no, just checking. If I lose now, yeah. If you lose now, Mike, it's because I stole one of your really rubbery prawns. Don't worry. He's an a-hole. But it's not rubbery. I tasted one. It's good. I'm just going to get it going with this, and then I'm going to use my hands to mush it myself. Ah, it's hot. Oh no, yeah, that's not mashed. Ah, no. Bail. Run away. It's too hot. So this prawn sauce is reduced down massively and become lovely and thick and viscous. I'm going to put it into a small pan now, just so we can adjust the seasoning. This big pan with the large surface area has done its job. Quickly prep some kale while the fish cake's chilling. I'm going to strip the stalk out of this cavolo nero, give it a really fine chop. A bit of butter, a bit of olive oil for flavour as well, salt, pepper, 
splash of water, high heat with a lid on, and that'll just steam through, keep all the nutrients and the juices in the kale. Ah, my eye! It doesn't really taste fishy at all. I'm going to chew it. Put some fish sauce in it. I know it's cheating, but he's a chef. Right, kale. Get rid of those stalks. And I'm just going to saute them like that. Totally soft, buttery, nice and sweet. High power blender. Let's let it do its job. So, fish cake. Chill down. Still quite soft. We don't want it too potatoey. I like a lot of fish in my fish cake. Flour, egg wash, breadcrumbs, hot oil. Simple as that. I'm going to put a splash of white wine in there, just because. We want it to be a, a punchy one. I've definitely made enough for two big ones, so I'm okay with that. Angry! So I've still got these prawns that I left for garnish. So I'm going to put them in the sauce just to poke through. So we've got some lovely tender prawns, crispy fish cake, fried egg for that jammy yolk, lovely sa uh, sauteed kale underneath it, and a carrot puree around. Quite happy with this so far. So I'm happy with that colour. Going onto a bit of kitchen paper on a tray. Leave it in the oven on low just to keep warm while we plate up. So, these are crispy parsley fried eggs. Get a lovely colour, loads of freshness, nice bubble to the white, and brings a bit of difference to the simple dish. I think I might plate up, Mike. You go for it. You it's sure? Only yeah, you're only going to demonstrate the chasm between the two of us. Fine, right. Right, let's plate. Service! Service! At the pass. At the pass. I don't want to see his. Ready? Wait. Oh, that's so good. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. So, so quite a difference. Where's that? That wasn't in the recipe. No, but there were three eggs. So I used one for the pan and I fried off two. Let's mix it up. Let's start with this. We're, we'll both eat this. I'll both eat this first. And then we'll move on to what I could have won. How many? Now let's, yeah, let's go into it first. Oh, I've, so, I've got so many questions. Yeah. I went out to produce one fish cake and I ended up with having an opportunity for multiple potato cakes. It's a big cake. Oh, that sauce is nice. Okay, it's not, not a sweetness from the sauce. It's not terrible. Counteracts the seasoning in the fish cake. It's fine, it is okay. Yeah, did you taste the fish cake before you? Yeah, I did. Would you say it's a bit salty? Yeah. Touch. So far, it is a fish cake with a prawny sauce and very big ears of kale. Yeah, yeah. 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 I it's... love Cavalier Nero, but it is one of those things that it's a lot of mastication if you get it wrong. It could do with more Wilkin, couldn't it? Or more chopping. And what's the thinking behind lots of raw parsley on top? Uh, hide it. Hide it, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the brief was fish cake, tick. Wilted kale, tick. Prawn shell sauce. How many prawns did he use to make this sauce? Right. Time to come clean. Five prawns. Five prawns, right. Which are in the fish cake. And then the heads and the shells. And then when I made the sauce, I didn't chop the carrots up enough, so it was very thick and it didn't taste of fish at all. So I may have added a bit of fish sauce to it. Where's that? It was in the middle. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> well, you might, you know, might still win. All right, come, come on. What? This is what, this is what the people really want to see. And mate, it looks exceptional. That's new. That's new. So we were given three eggs. So one egg in there, one egg on top. 
How do you make things taste like that? Well, that's carrot puree. We had like a kilo of- Don't say it as if, oh, it's just a carrot puree. I couldn't even make a fish cake. Yeah, but you put all your carrots in your sauce, right? Yeah. I put my carrots in my sauce and then use the rest of them up. So there's no fish in this. It's just carrot and butter. Yeah, it's delicious. Now let's go, go on. Let's see do you want to crack the yolk or fly? You crack the yolk. Oh yeah, that is far denser and full of a lot more fish. Yeah, it's one thing I think about fish and cakes. you really diced it up properly, haven't you? I, I, mine's very chunky. Yeah, so I pre-cooked my fish in the reduced down sauce. Oh, I can't even describe how exponentially better this is than that. That is really, really good. I'm happy with it, yeah. So I wanted a really intense sauce, so I think I prepped what, 12, 15 prawns and then served some of the prawns on the side. Oh. And I didn't chop up the prawns inside, I just halved them so you get a nice chunk. That is there amazing. Imagine finding one of them in a fish cake. It's luxury, isn't it? And I shredded the kale. Yeah, I should have done that. So rather than your jaws doing the hard work, let your sharp knife do the hard work. And it cooks a lot quicker as well. Again, the problem with this is that, yes, I was given some steps, but there was no weights, measurements, or process within them. Mm -hmm. It was like, make this, make that. There's no reference point. Like, it's just words. I can't see what it's supposed to look like. See, I think that's key. Visualize what you're trying to cook. So if you had to summarize each dish and then a quick comparison, yeah. where would you land? Um, I'd say one or two days at cookery school for a 12 year old. That is so unfair. And they'd, they'd be really impressed with that. You, Mike, can do better, but yeah. you know that. Yeah. And this one, maybe I went a bit too far by making a puree and a fried egg. I wasn't trying to show you up. It's, so. it's fantastic. Great job. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, this is all well and good, but unless you are an actual chef, you are not going to be able to operate like this fine specimen here, which is why we made our Sidekick app. It's for normal home cooks like us. It takes all the useful stuff they do and it packages it up in an easy to use app that basically does all your thinking for you. Just follow along and you'll have days on end of delicious food that you pretty much cooked on autopilot and you'll use up all your ingredients so no wasted food in the fridge at the end of the week. And to make things even easier, we're currently trialing some stuff with grocery delivery company GoPuff, where Sidekick users can get £10 off of four deliveries. Go and try it all and let us know how you get on. And if you like this video, give it a like and comment below, what should we cook next? Oh, I don't want to do any more of these. Oh, come on. We get the other normals. I like these.